Stocks trade soft after a weak session in the U.S. overnight. Metals, oil as well as gas and uh, IT come under pressure even as healthcare and real estate not some gains. Mid-caps outperform today. Tata Motors' new EV curve breaks the price barrier by bringing parity with the ICE vehicles at a tag of 17.5 to 22 lakh rupees. The model also addresses the range anxiety with a real-world range of 350 to 400 kilometers. The stock gains in today's session. Hindalco's arm Novellis reports mostly inline numbers, but damage from heavy rainfall at its plant in Switzerland is expected to inflict a $30 million dent in operating profits in the second quarter. The rain hit weighs on the stock. The Reserve Bank of India calls for vigil on liquidity as investors shun bank deposits, asks banks to rein in unsecured credit, warns about non-adherence to loan-to-value principles for home loans and issues an alert for preemptive measures in light of the recent global tech outage. Hello and welcome. You've tuned into Business Lunch. I'm Nisha. With me as always is Hormaz. So Hormaz, it's again uh, yet another week day of trade. But of course, uh, banking space needs to be seen with the kind of uh, Reserve Bank of India's uh, monetary policy and the announcements there. And HDFC Bank is leading Bank Nifty to stay afloat in the green. So minor gains when we talk about Bank Nifty, but Nifty as well as Sensex 0.6% down in trade and mid cap. They are the outliers by a small margin in the green at the moment. Advanced decline ratio in favor of the advances by a slight margin today. And when we talk about stock specifics from the auto pack, Tata Motors with the big announcement coming in is the biggest percentage uh, gainer in uh, trade today. HDFC Bank, uh, SBI amongst the uh, banking pack is doing well. And on the downside, some of the IT names are not doing too well. Hormas. Right, the weekly expiry today and it's been extremely choppy ever since the expi the RBI uh, commentary has taken place. The Nifty at one point was up almost towards the 24300 mark and it has now slumped back to the lowest point of the day towards 24150 and that is showing up in the weeks as well. If you can pull up the weeks, that has seen a sharp spike towards the highs of the day now currently nearing levels of 17, almost 4% higher now is the weeks. So a lot of choppiness in the market today ahead of the weekly expiry for the Nifty. The last couple of hours of the trading session will be very important to watch out for. One specific stock that I wanted to highlight is Bharat Forge. After some very positive commentary coming in from the management and uh, they said that the positive momentum will continue in FY25 as well after the quarterly results. For the Indian operations and for the overseas operations, they are expecting the losses to narrow as the financial year goes by, showing up in the stock price as well. 4% higher now at the day's high. 1,620 is Bharat Forge. But sticking with this auto space, we're focusing on Tata Motors now, and that is the top nifty gainer after the company launched their electric vehicle curve at a time when the EV automakers are witnessing a drop in demand and sales. We caught up with the managing director, Shailesh Chandra, to talk about the new launches and its features. Listen in to what he had to say. I love the body style itself. Then there are many features which I love. The big boot space that you get. Uh, the drivability of EV is fantastic. I just drove the car for 25-30 uh, kilometers uh, inside the factory. It was fabulous to drive. I like the drivability. All the creature comfort features which are uh, given in this car are absolutely fine. The flush door handle, all that gives you a very premium uh, feeling uh, as far as this car is concerned. All right, Tata Motors with that big announcement and loss. Now, several brokerage firms have also issued bullish notes following the automaker's new launch. And Sonia is right here to tell us what the brokerages are making of it. And the stock has been revving up on that as well. So. Well, thanks a lot for that. You know, uh, most brokerages continue to be quite bullish. So I have three brokerages right now. Nomura has a buy with a target price of 1303 which is a big upside to the current market price. They say that the curve has been launched at an attractive uh, price of around 17 to 21 lakhs. They believe that the Tata curve breaks all the barriers for electric vehicle adoption. It brings price parity between electric vehicles and the IC engine. It significantly reduces range anxiety, offers real-world range of 350 to 400 
kilometer so that is a positive jeffries is a buy with a target price of 1330 on the stock so once again well above the current market price they talk about how the new mid sized curve ev fills up a lot of the gaps in the tata motors portfolio the vehicle appears well styled feature rich and the ev comes at a very attractive price i think the attractive price point is the main uh, you know positive that a lot of brokerages see they also talk about how the tata group has made a big comeback in the passenger vehicle space in the last 4 years and the curve has a potential to further lift its more its market share and uh, finally morgan stanley has an equal weight with a target price of 1178 they talk about how at a time when ev sales have slowed down the tata has launched the curve at an attractive price point so perhaps it could break through into the segment they are closely tracking the success of this model it will provide a broad read across on the ev demand in india whether ev demand in fy26 will be v shaped or not back to you well as they say bhav bhagwan che in market terminology i guess that applies to cars as well sonia <laughs> thanks a lot for that update time for a short break here on business lunch up next we get you more news and updates on the other side stay tuned Back with us here on Business Lunch, the big story of the day: the Reserve Bank of India kept interest rates unchanged and maintained its growth and inflation estimates for the year. But very importantly, the RBI governor has flagged concerns on deposits, personal loans, top-up home loans, and IT risks. Let's go across to Ritu Singh now to tell us what the governor had to say today. Ritu, over to you. Well, yes, Harmaz. A lot of concerns raised on these four specific points, which the governor chose to highlight during the press conference today. Starting with deposits, where we, he alluded to the fact uh, that the gap between the growth rate of deposits and the growth rate of credits is widening, and that may lead to a systemic liquidity risk, uh, you know, for the banks that are involved. He clarified on his earlier comment, saying it is not that he wants to direct individuals to put money in deposits or to not put money in markets. That was their personal decision. But the fact that this could, this uh, could pose a liquidity risk for banks is something he wanted to highlight keep in mind uh, as of the last available data there was bank credit growth of about 14% that we saw and credit uh, and deposit growth of a little over 11% and the credit deposit ratio has also been hovering around those 80% levels since september of last year the second area of concern was personal loans where he said Although the pace of growth of unsecured personal loans has come down since last year, uh, when the risk weights on these uh, segments of loans were increased, but there are still some pockets that are showing high, uh, you know, growth rates, and that is something that needs continuous monitoring. Uh, on home loan, top-up home loans specifically, he said there are very select certain entities, and it is not a system-wide problem. Where the Reserve Bank of India has noticed that, you know, banks and NBFCs are offering top-up loans on other collateralized loans like gold loans, uh, which is in violation of. norms because this is not for home loans and they're breaching uh, you know uh, regulatory norms on loan to value ratio on risk weights and so on and so RBI said they are bilaterally engaging with these specific entities to resolve the matter and lastly uh, you know the microsoft crowd strike related it outage which affected uh, you know many entities including banks in india uh, there again he stressed on the importance of building resilience in this investing in tech and having a business continuity plan to avoid fallouts like this All right, Ritu. Thanks so much for all those details. Of course, some uh, big uh, concerns have been flagged by the RBI governor, and especially the deposit uh, growth rate for the banking system that has plagued the sector for a few quarters now, and has been pointed out by the RBI as well. To be pointed out now, let's uh, slip into a short breather on business lunch. But when we return, we'll get you more news and updates on the other side. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back you're watching Business Lunch a quick look at the market and half a percent down on Nifty 50 as well as Sensex but the action is really picking up in the other pockets which is Bank Nifty now up almost 0.2% in trade and mid caps 0.27% in trade take a look at uh, two counters which are on my radar today MRF which has shot up in the last few minutes of trade and um, that is one stock to be kept on our radar almost 3 percent up in trade and bharat forge continues uh, its momentum upwards almost 5% gain on that particular counter all right on that note it's out of time on this edition of business lunch don't go anywhere midcap radar comes up right next thanks so much